I, my company was running well yet, so I paid for the stickers and I tried to, you know, put more money on it. But I failed in like more than 20 tasks. And that failures teach me how to do the right thing, you know, because when you fail, it's any step to the success. And then I figure out what I really need to do. And one day you tweet it. It's just about Bitcoin circular economy. And that day I close it, everything. And then I start to look at what a circular economy is. Now all kids are Satoshi Nakamoto <laughs> in the Jericho Aquarius School. And I like it. Who's Satoshi? Who knows? Can be you. <laughs> you know, they, they love that story. The idea to the first activation of a Bitcoin circular economy that I try to push is to create a way to help people to lower their time preference, right? So I try to teach the kids lower their time preference. Don't buy a candy today. Save one dollar today to spend it in 10, 20, 30 years. We are live here from Bitcoin Beach with Praia Bitcoin, uh, Fernando from Brazil. He's been with us for, I think, the last week here in El Salvador. I'm just amazed at the different tools and stuff he's developing for their circular economy that they've started in Brazil. Um, yeah, we had an amazing day at the beach here in El Salvador. It was the Sun, this, this is Sunday today that we're recording, so uh, the conference ended, I think, Wednesday, and since then we've had four days of activities in El Zante. Today was the big open water swim. Uh, both Fernando and I did not participate in that, and uh, I'm glad because I, I saw them rescue like 25 people uh, during the event that it was, I think, eight kilometers uh, for the, the longest group. So we're content here to... Uh, be, be in the podcast studio and be talking about the amazing project that they have uh, going on in Brazil. So for now, I'm going to turn it over to you. Tell us a little bit about the, the project that you have and how it started, how it came to be. And yeah, we'll just dig into the, the new tools that you're using and, and the things that you're trying to convince me we need to integrate here. Okay, Mike, thanks for having me here. And so glad to be at the Bitcoin Beach original experiment here in El Zonte. I am so glad to participate of the conference. I had such great time by meeting incredible people, the developers and the people they are making the financial revolution. So I was amazed by, you know, share my experience with the community here. I am only here because you supported me. So I need to first thank you very much by your support to create our circular economy. And that's it. Uh, well, I started uh, like one year ago when the uh, Bitcoin day that saw the, the Bitcoin law took place here, 7th of September. And since then, I was working to create our circular economy on Jerico Aquara, northeast of Brazil, 300 kilometers from the capital, Fortaleza, in the state of Ceará. It's a really small village with around 300 people, 3,000 people who live there. So pretty uh, similar to El Zante in size. Yeah, yes. And also we are a surfing, a longboard surfing spot and also a kite surfing paradise. We have a pretty strong wind it's like from June, June to December where is the season to kite surf and also wind surf. And it's uh, one of the 10 most beautiful beats of the planet, spotlight by Huffington Post and CNN. And they like Jericho Aquara very much because it's a small village inside of a national park. And I was living there since the February of 2020, before the pandemics. 
And during that period, I get engaged with the local population. I helped several artists and uh, fishermen and people who live there who was struggling during the, the pandemics. And when I, I, my, I knew about Bitcoin Beach experiment and how it gets started by helping families and impacting their lives using Bitcoin as a tool for social transformation, I, I knew I need to replicate that. And I was the uh, shit corner, right? During the, my learning curve, I get more than 100 shit coins. And then when I figure out that Bitcoin was different of every crypto, I became like a um, Bitcoin minimalist, just Bitcoin. So I started by trying to help some merchants and the local people to use Bitcoin as a tool to financial inclusion. My story with Bitcoin is it's, there are several aspects that began in 2013, like uh, I bought some BTC and then I found the private key in a piece of paper in the cloud. And then I found that I had a lot of Bitcoin and it saved my life. After one year of pandemics, my company like was almost broke and then I sell it to pay my debts and to fire my employees. And uh, with $1,000 around 0.02 BTC, I started to create the R experiment and uh, I called it of Bitcoin Beach BR at the beginning. And then uh, we helped more than 120 users at the first stage of the experiment to help them to use wallets and uh, transact through Lightning and create on-chain wallets. And it was just a little dream that I started really small and then the project started. Oh, so I, I remember hearing about Bitcoin Beach Brazil. And in fact, even within the team, they were talking about like, hey, there, there's some guy saying that they're doing Bitcoin Beach in, in Brazil. We don't know who this guy is and he's using our name. And so we had that discussion with even in our team because all of a sudden there was all this attention and we were getting inundated with requests. And and so as we talked through things, we're like, hey, no, this is great. We, we'd love to see other people replicating what we're doing. The, the, the name doesn't really matter. We do want to make sure that people aren't using, you know, our project to scam people. And, and it's hard to know. Um, so that was kind of a discussion we had internally. And then I remember um, somebody connected us with you and we had a call. I'm trying to remember who, do you remember who it was? No, I think Lucas. Lucas, okay. Lucas from Lightning Labs had a that's call. That's right, that's right. It was Lucas. I was not in the call. We never talked before. I thought we were on, yeah, we had one conference call where we, we chatted for a little bit. I it might have been after that. I don't remember. Yeah, there, don't remember. that was a crazy time. Everybody was during lockdown. And um, yeah, I think you talked with the guys of, of Lightning Labs. Uh -huh. Also, that was like at the beginning. Uh, Roman sent me a message. Oh, man, Bitcoin Beach is like uh, a brand, you know, and that's it. And I said, man, I just like to help the project. I am here like to 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 you know spread the idea i i wanted to follow the bitcoin beach standard just tell me what i need to do and there's a music of uh draft punk called giorgio mm -hmm. and he says oh when i began to play music i don't know. anyone tell me what to do you know and you guys didn't right i i was expecting some like what what you you can do how to do it and i i discovered by myself by doing experiment and trying tools and i was i was upset you know and that <laughs> I, I call it i said to lucas oh man we are brazilians we are going to do i have 500 stickers and i will prove these guys that we are good people and we are going to push that idea and because of that I created our crowdfunding campaign and then I tried to like to prove, to show my proof of work, like 
everything that I did, every decision that I made is published. It's open to everyone. And so what, after a couple of months, you did your first donation and you didn't say anything. You just went to our page and donated 2.1 million, 2 million sets. And then our relation started. Yeah, no, I remember that time because we had a lot of discussions internally because everybody was getting inundated. They were getting hammered by the press. There was all these different things. And so we were kind of scrambling, trying to figure out what to do. And that was the time we're like, no, this we really want to embrace all these projects that are coming about. We, we need to be careful. We need to make sure yes. people aren't using our name to scam people. But this is what it's all about. We want it to be decentralized. We want all these other projects to pop up. We want to be able to learn from them because for sure they'll figure out stuff that, that we haven't figured out, which which we're seeing here with you, you know, this week and and with the, the bolt cards and and all the new things you've been working on. Um, but yeah, I remember that and I remember kind of watching and and I think at that time you were still trying to figure out what exactly you guys were going to focus on. And so we gave, you know, like a small donation. And I said, let's let's see what this guy does. Let's see if he's for real, if he's oh. just going to talk about it and then go do something else. But as I watched, you just kept kind of steadily progressing with these things. And the other thing that really impressed me was you would publish what you were doing and you would say, these are the things that we're going to do. These are things that we failed, that we said we were going to do, but that we, didn't we actually do? These are the ones we did complete. And I love that kind of openness and honesty about it. Um, thanks to Lucas, because at the beginning, Aza was a shit coiner. Like, I, tr I, you know, I started my journey uh, in the project, like, and I, I created the, the first uh, uh, NFT of a Brazilian man meme uh -huh. i created uh, the most successful cyber print uh, considered by the next the new york times the most successful cyber prints is cala boca galvão it's a campaign to you know in the 2010 world cup and then i i created this nft and said oh if i sold it i will finance the creation of our our economy and then luca said to me man you are totally wrong. <laughs> you can't do this. There's, you know, NFTs are bad. You you are totally wrong. We don't need a Satoshi statue, you know, and was in the crowdfunding. And thanks to Lucas, I fixed it and I understood the point and I started to look to the crypto market in a different way. I wasn't a minimalist yet. And Lucas said to me, oh, you need to fix that in order to you get real Bitcoiners, people that is pushing Bitcoin only companies to, you know, get their attention. So I fixed our crowdfunding campaign, changed it, removed it, Satoshi statue to the main square of the and removed the idea of the NFT. And also I have a promise that to burn all my NFTs. I just waiting uh, Ethereum like crash to to do so, <laughs> and uh, and and they started like write down everything that I did, and it's important. Like I bought uh, in ATM, Galois donated to me also. Like with that donation, I bought an ATM, and uh, they send uh, some pieces of that uh, and I fry it, it is, I, I burn it because I, I, you know, get wrong connections yeah. and then I fail and then I fail by doing several stuff because it's really difficult what I did. I started to run our own node. I started to create channels with only 0 0.02 BTC. So at the beginning, I, I, my company was running well yet, so I paid for the stickers and I tried to, you know, put more money on it, but I failed in like more than 20 tasks. And that failures uh, teach me how to do the right thing, you know, because when you fail, it's, it's any step to the success. And then I figure out what I really need to do to, and one day you tweet it, 
oh, it's just about Bitcoin circular economy, Bitcoin circular economy, Bitcoin circular economy. And that day I closed everything and then I start to look at what the circular economy is. And there are circular economy for, you know, it's a way that you think how you, your consumption is and you try to make it sustainable, right? So it changes everything. Then I stop it to go to the merchants and ask them to, to accept Bitcoin and ask to invite and stop it to uh, invite tourists to go to Jericho Aquara because they went there, they spent some BTC and it's like so basic, everyone can do this. And I start to focus on the social aspect and uh, in the educational programs that lead us to what we are now. So then I told you like, Mike, we have some computers in the school, thanks to Nena, the library girl who is working in the school. She's really special person. Because of her, I went to Jericho Aquara and then um, I she told, oh, the computers of the school are two, year, are two years without work and we need to fix that. And they said, no, I will ask for funds for uh, fix it. And I wait like one month to the authorization of the Secretary of Education to be able to raise funds <laughs> to fix it. And then I waited, uh, I get really hungry with that, but, and I say to you, man, oh, can you help me to fix the computers of the school? I need like a donation that we need to fix that. There are 20 computers there. They are not working. I need, and you donated to me like 0 0.1 BTC. And it's something incredible happened in that. And we, uh, I am here because of it. In that time, before to get engaged of the school, I went to the Campo Grande where my child, my daughter live, uh, live it before. And then I was there and she was a little bit sad, you know, because I was so far away and she's mother was working and my company was in a terrible situation. And then in that day, I asked God, man, my God, I don't, I don't know what to do. I can't back to Jericho Aquara and leave her here. And then a few minutes later, I received 0.1 BTC from a donation. And then, man, you see, like, was an incredible time. I called my mom and say, mom, it's like, you know, we have, it's, it's spiritual. It's nothing. I will do that and say, no, I don't like Bitcoin. It's a pyramid. There's, you know, scammers everywhere. And say, no, mom, it's, I will do that. I will back and I get half of that funds. Uh, someone shared me a car and I back to Jericho Aquara like 3,500 kilometers because the oh. flight was uh, really, really expensive. And uh, uh, really great friends uh, shared me uh, uh, this, uh, how do I say that, the, the, his car. And uh, I went there and used like, like 0 0.4 BTC to make the trip. And I got sick during the trip. It, was a re I it took like five days. And when I back, all parts of the computers are there. And then I was able to like make it happen and everything started. So I, sh I think we have a video uh, like, so here is the first place that I, I was able to pay with Bitcoin, it's a bakery. And for those of you who don't have the video, it's just showing them uh, the first store that's taking it. It's a yeah. little deli bakery. Yes, here's the old tools that I, I use. My node, BTC, Blue Wallet, BTC Pay Server, and in Beats. And this is the guy who shared his car with me to the trip, all the river. So did he come, he come with you on the trip? No, then? no, no, oh, okay. no. He just shared. Sure. He bought a car in Campo Grande and I bring to him. He's living on a Capri, a other beach there. And uh, he, he did. Uh, this payment, this video to, you know, show 
our solution. Yeah. And uh, at the beginning, they scan their QR code that lead you for a page, and then the baker start to accept. And my motivation at the beginning was to use the Bitcoin because as I bought some Bitcoin in 2013 and I almost reached the limit to not pay taxes, it's 30,000 reais you can pay without capital gain taxes. So at that, uh, at that point, I was reaching that limit and then I went to um, a shop to sell mobile phones and then I bought a phone with Bitcoin with sending to Binance and then and then was it and then that's the the, the school all that computers was broke before that donation and then I fixed it all it's before not. so those computers were just sitting not being used that yeah. I, I remember that because I remember you saying hey it's it's kind of sad they have these computers and they don't need that much money to fix them all, but we can get them up and running and that will open the door, I think, for the school to be more open to yeah. start doing Bitcoin education. So, yeah, yeah. So that is it. And now all computers has stickers and, you know, we are running a node in that lab and all. I, we will reach that, but I fixed everything, make the Internet works, get a partnership with... Um, the internet, the local internet provider, now, now they have a, a fiber optics of 400 megabytes. Wow. And it's the best class for the kids that they have in the school. They love it. They go there to, to learn history and every, every teacher. Then you just ask to me like, oh, make some t-shirts. Did you remember? Yeah, that? yeah, yeah. And I said, okay, I will do. And some synage for the merchants. But at that point, I said, man, make no sense to make some t-shirts only. I, I need to make something better. You know, I need to, to, to make, uh, to give a tool for the kids, uh, stack sets, right? And then I start to file, to look some, some solutions to, to print paper wallets. And then I figure out that the all available paper wallets can be a scan because I understand how the paper wallets are generated and all available, uh, paper wallets on the internet. They are, they were, uh, like with a uh, private keys and not mnemonic phrase. So I get an, an HML of Ian Coleman, BP39. And then this HML, uh, allows me to create in an offline computer, uh, seeding phrases with the, in a totally safe way, you know, and then I created uh, a code to generate the seeding phrase. I, I recorded a macro in an offline computer to generate like 600 paper wallets. And we created a kit to give it to the kids. And then at some point, the Brazil, some important Brazilian Bitcoiners said, oh, it's ridiculous. It's crazy. You are generating to them like the private keys. And man, they don't know how to read, you know, how? They were going to start from somewhere. We, they don't have phones, you know. Then I, I shared our codes. Uh, there's a lot of communities using that now. It's like the youth made code storage wallet available on the market now that you can go to our repository and download it. And if you find a bug, please report it and we are going to fix because the way that we are going it, like when I created this offline computer, I turn out, turn it off all logs of the server, the PHP server that is needed to run it and to make it offline in a computer who never gets in touch with internet. And then I printed it and with help of my child, who we don't know how to read yet. We cut pack and seal 600 paper wallets and we give 370 for the kids, 
40 for the teachers and the rest for the other community members, local workers. I, th I think you can well, play. I, I remember when you were talking about those and, and I, I at that time failed to understand the educational benefit of doing the paper wallets for them to understand how it all works. I was thinking this is kind of silly to do paper wallets. They're only going to use it once. But now I understand better. This shows them how all the the private keys and the public keys come together and helps them understand behind the scenes how it actually works. Yes, it's like we have three QR codes. You can uh, go to the next video. Yes, we, uh, it's, it's the paper wallet. It's just a uh, 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 one that anyone can use because I printed the wrong address on it. So it's a real paper wallet, but it's it's a bug on it. I generated better addresses. This is Lagos addresses showing, but there are three QR codes. One is the address, one is the XPUB address, and other is the, the seeding phrases. And at the, the, the verse, the backside, there's the code and our donation or campaign crowdfund campaign and you can verify it in the in the main pool how many sets are inside of that wallet so if they keep it close right with the seals anyone has that key it's offline it's a good storage wallet and also with some instructions if you can play again uh that video there are some structures how to import the wallet how to use it how is bitcoin how to to you know and it's, it's really important uh that qr code that's showing now it's the really only qr code that you can import in a mobile and just to see what's inside and to check the balance so now we have kids on the streets selling groceries and receive payments you know in that it's it's a tool like and also it's a tool for the future like i did i wrote down 12 words and there are 24 words wallets it's safer uh try in a paper and eight years before but after i it saved my life so i understood that bitcoin is a saving technology right so uh that allowed your community to start their habit whole journey right they oh it's bitcoin oh and here's my child and she's friend working to make it happen was so really, great i love that, the, yeah, that they're involved yeah. and and that's so amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also we built it with so much love, man. I am so thankful by received don it's I received like 300 at that point it's like 250 donations and the my main Bitcoin Beach donations and Galoi. And also there's this sticker here saying, "Oh, we built it with love." And uh it's all that I did with so much love, it's all handmade. And there's no reason for me to like take note of these words. You know, I, I am writing a book about the whole experience, how to create a circular economy. So I if I, you know, it's like, what's the point here we it's a educational tool there's 1000 sets i tell kids man don't use that wallet create your wallet but it's impossible to them you know they don't if i started by trying to cheat them how to create their own wallets i will going to fail yeah so for the guys on on the olimpo in the last development you know the the very bitcoiners for several years they don't understand that you know we are dealing with then we delivered there are the t-shirts that you requested to me we did it and also we've provided some squeeze and the paper wallets and the pig banks and so so explain to me what you guys are doing with the with the piggy banks because i love this combination yes. of saving and teaching people to to exchange for harder money so yeah. 
Ex describe yeah. that. The the idea to to the first activation of uh, Bitcoin circular economy that I try to push is to create like uh, a way to help people to lower their time preference, right? So as I did, I get twenty dollars, and then it saved my life eight years. So when you bought your original Bitcoin, yeah. you only you only spent twenty dollars worth yeah. of that, and then it saved my life. I was able to do everything that I did with this saving, you know. So I try to teach the kids lower their time preference. Don't buy a candy today. Save one dollar today to spend it in 20, 10, 20, 30 years. What it can be like, you know, if you change your time preference, it's what is Bitcoin about? It's like it's how the billionaires become billionaires. It's they change their time preference. They don't spend today. And the problem with that concept is fiat is like designed to go zero. Yeah. And like why why do you want to save when you know the value is going to keep going down? Yeah. So we have the big banks buyout. We go to the school. And so you have them save each month, right? They put all their coins and stuff they can yes. save and they put it in the and, piggy bank. And the piggy bank has some instructions like help your parents, make plans for the future, uh, like, uh, uh, you know, make plans to travel, to buy equipment. What do you want to, to play? And they check it. Oh, I wanted to help my parents. I wanted to have a better feeding. I, I, they, they, they have some words and they sign it and then they try, they, they, we go there and we, we buy it with, with, with 10% reward. So, so they turn in how many it's reals that they yeah, have, yeah. So they turn in their reals and you guys give them in Bitcoin, but you, you bring it up 10% more. Yeah. Yeah. Just and then you were saying you, then they actually, you guys donate the coins back to the school to yeah, use in, yeah. in their community garden project or something. Yeah. 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 So to not touch in fiat money that I got the donations and then I, I, I give it then to the kids and I help the school that, you know, I don't want to, to touch fiat. I yeah. Don't. You know, I don't trust it. <laughs> so the, the point is they need to buy like, you know, uh, fertilizers or, or, you know, I don't know, blocks or something else. So they use the coins. And then, then after it, I just, I see my friend Gabby there in the picture. From, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. From Argentina. He's, he's uh, a nice guy because when she, he was there, some kids uh, went to us and said, look, my paper wallet. And he'd see it live, you know, the revolution is starting. Oh, my own chain wallet. And, you know, a kid of eight years old, like talking of a, a wallet of Bitcoin. And they are really excited with it because they never save yeah. anything. So uh, at we are at that point today. We raised it like 1.0, 1.22 BTC, uh, Bitcoin bit donation around like half BTC to us. And, and a very important guy who is, is responsible for our last developments is Vinicius Kingsell from the channel of Palavras of Satoshi. It's like uh, the Bitcoin Pope. It's like uh, a guy who is going, I'm sorry, who's going to the um, merchants and helping them to receive Bitcoin payments. And he, he, uh, he's uh, registering time after and before Satoshi, uh, before and after Satoshi. So now we are like uh, 13 years after Satoshi. It's like, uh, it's like, you know, we are like 2022 years after Jesus and he, he considers Satoshi this spiritual leader who's trying to push the freedom speech and, and things. So he saw the revolution happening. He saw the kids, he 
He saw the kids selling groceries in the streets with the paper wallets, with their big banks. And no, man, I need to help you. I need to support you somehow. What do you need? And then, man, it's like, okay, man, give money. I will make, give me some BTC. So he donated uh, half BTC to me also. And then I created the next stage or or for development the cards and the pos machine so you can so so explain to to people a little bit why this so important to have both the paper wallets but also the cards because this is something we struggle with somewhat also but i think for you guys it's even more so that that there's a lot of people without smartphones without internet and it's very hard to get them to use Bitcoin without those tools. Yes. Jericho Aquara don't have any ATM, right? So, and also people who live there, they are like uh, the forgotten ones. And also there's an important thing. It's, it's like the Bitcoin Smile initiative. Uh, they they introduced it to me that concept. The, 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 the work of Dr. Enrique it's so beautiful, it's so inspiring, and he got really poor people and he fixed their mouths and it's like incredible. And when I saw his interviews talking about it, I think, man, these are the kids of the forgotten ones. They don't need to be the kids of the forgotten. They, I will teach them the financial freedom. Right. So I started like to to because I don't like my child to have a smartphone. I think it's bad for the kids. Yeah, uh, I, it, I hate the I hate the phones for yeah, the kids. Yeah, it's it's really bad for the kids. They they get stressed and they the, the the tools are developed to to you know get your attention and to you. They, they sit and watch TikTok and waste their day. Yeah, yeah, it's terrible, <laughs> you know. So I started to think that tools like the paper wallet was to stack sets and to understand Bitcoin, the keywords, the XPUB and the addresses and, uh, you know, uh, understand the fraction of Bitcoin. So then, yeah, I think you came back uh, another one. Uh, we are reached that then uh, Satoshi, uh, Vinicius donated to me. I call him Satoshi, but Vinicius donated to me. And he's the, our second activation when, when we give away the cards to the kids. So explain, explain the cards, what, okay. why, why the importance of that and, and what these cards do, because um, I'm, I'm thrilled about it. I'm super excited about the potential of, of the cards for okay. a lot of reasons. This technology is created, it's a permissionless, borderless technology created by, I think, the coin corner guys, but I don't know who created both card. I think it's made by the coin corner, but I don't know if they are the real developers behind it. It's open source technology that allow you run your NFC card inside of your own node, right? So what I did, I figured out how it works. It's very simple. There's another Brazilian technology called LNURL, I think Fiat Jaff did it. That I didn't know that came out of Brazil. Yes, of Brazil? yes. Okay. I think it's a Brazilian who did it. And, um, and another Brazilian did the lightning address, Andrea Neves. And so it's the main technology of the cards. We use LNURL to make uh, contactless payments and to run it in our own nodes and it's uh, widely widely available in all wallets so you can use it uh, like in wallet of satoshi in breeze in other wallets too in bitcoin beach wallet everyone use that protocol that allow you scan a qr code and send or receive you know payments so it's really powerful and then i figure out using the last commit, the last published version of the software available, I, I installed it 
it in the node of the school and give to the director their own bank. I get that international connection in the, inside the lab and then I, I bought a no break and uh, I set up with help of Lee Saltman of Bitcoin Jungle, uh -huh. who helped me to fix some issues of the implementation because the tool that we use, my node had a bug in alien bits. So I, I did a wild installation to make it works. And our kids don't have mobile phones. And I don't like kids with mobile phones. So I created something that allowed them to spend their money, right? So they stack sets and also they can use their car to make actual purchase. So we did a partnership with a fruit shop that uh, you can back the, 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 the other video. Well, I love yeah. that it was a fruit shop that, that you're getting the kids to buy food that's actually good yes. for them. So first I delivered to all kids this kit with uh, an NFC card, a boat card, uh, and the technical uh, part of the card is uh, any tag 424 DNA, who every time you tap the card, change the code, it's impossible to clone. You can get the content of the card, but it check on the server. So this, the card is really strong technology. And then I, I created with Lee Saltman of Bitcoin Jungle this uh, guide with how what's Bitcoin, what's Lightning, how to use Blue Wallet. Then we have several QR codes inside of it with how to access using a browser, how to add it on Blue Wallet, how to connect with your Telegram account how to uh, withdraw money off the wallet, where's the node. It's very technical, you know, but the kids are using it without know to, how to read. They are already using the card. So I did a partnership with Jeff Rutas, who was a guy for, if you teach me Bitcoin, I give you 50% discount in my fruits. So, okay, man, you are my student forever. I will. And then I went there, I created a POS machine. And then every day we are buying more than 300 fruits to serve kids with their cards for 10 sats, one cent of real each fruit. So it's so you go and buy them that what we're seeing in the video here, this is you buying them from the store. Yes. The and then first you day. take them to the, the school and they sell them there and the, and the kids pay for them 10 sats each. Yeah. Yeah. Now uh, I hired someone to make it. It's a guy from the community, Skauli, his name. He's working every day from nine to seven to 5 p.m. The 9 from a.m. from 7 p.m. every day and at Saturday, 2 p.m. at 5 p.m. And he's he's going to buy the fruits, go to the school, go with the kids. And it's really, really, really nice, people. It's like I wanted to see that idea spread. I wanted to, to see other places like, you know, I was really happy to make it happen. So here's the result. Well, I love, like I said, I love that it's fruit and they're buying good food, not just junk. Because, yes, um, and that's it. He bought a banana for one cent. That's so yeah. crazy. That, <laughs> yeah. that just with their card right there. It was so quick. And yeah. so, I mean, easier. That happens faster than any credit card could happen. It's faster than if you're paying in cash. It's so and great. And then uh, th there's another one. In our Twitter, there's several. We are doing that every day since... I think 4th of November. I like uh, very much of that student. It's a kid of a forgotten one. So he bought two maçãs, two apples for two cents, 20 sats. So was his first time. Now kids are every day making a big lane waiting to buy their fruits and the fa their fathers went to me, oh man, you are a fucking hero. And I did anything like I did my, you know, 
I just did it. With the support of the all Bitcoin community is watching us now, you guys did it. I just, you know, I, I didn't write, I write some lines of code, but the Ben Ark for Ellen Beats, Taylor for my Node BTC, like the Bitcoin Core developers, developers, um, Lightning Labs, you know, they did, they did it. I, and, and also Bitcoin Beach, you know, created the first circular economy. And it's so hard. You see the T-shirt the of the kid. They are wearing Bitcoin yeah. in the school and they love it. And also one father asked, start to complain. Oh, you are promoting Bitcoin brand in the school and it's a hoax and blah, 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 blah. man you know, like they are buying fruit. When a kid go to the store buy fruit, never. So the project speaks to itself. It's prior Bitcoin now, we, we were branded, we like, we created that, you know, we are prior Bitcoin Brazil, prior Bitcoin Jericho Aquarius, we, we are pushing other communities to make it happen. Yeah. I, I wanted to create the Bitcoin beach box with the paper wallets, the, the node, the machine, the cards and everything ready for an African community from uh, everywhere. We send that box with a training course when we can make workshops online and it will gonna happen. Well, I, I, I know the, the pushing I got from you was part of the reason that, that we came out with the Bitcoin Beach white paper to kind of, cause you were like, Hey, how do we do this? And, and we had just been making it up as we went along and we hadn't really sat down. Luckily we had, uh, Steve, I think he goes by Hunikis on, um, on Twitter, but he was willing to come in and help us like actually write down our procedures. But I don't have a technical background at all. And so when I started interacting with you, I said, hey, here's this guy who actually understands how to make all this stuff work on the technical level. So this is going to be a great benefit, not, not just to what's happening in Brazil, but they can help us with our project and expand to the rest of the network of these circular economies that we're seeing spring up around the world. So that's part of the reason I wanted you to come here to El Salvador during this time was to show me what you're doing, but also with connect with Bitcoin Akasi from South Africa yeah. and for you to be time. able to communicate with the guys from Bitcoin Jungle who had already been helping you, but you'd never met in person before. You know, we had Bitcoin Lake there that was super excited about the cards. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm can't believe how quickly all this stuff has come together and, and it's just so impressive everything you've done in such a short time. No, man, we did it together. And thanks to the Bitcoin Beach White Paper V2, I get engaged with the community council. I incorporated the four pillars of uh, Bitcoin circular economy, recreation, education, technology, and spirituality in our project. So, our, so now we have a platform to our community growth in a, in a really, really, really beautiful way someone bang wheels of business insider asked me oh man do you think are you a missionary and they said no man that's bitcoin it's mathematics and that's it and in the, the in the interview i said no i am not a missionary but after know your work no patrick's work and, and lee saltman work we are all missionaries of the freedom of the peace we are together on this to make you know bitcoin thrive and we are i i opt out their game the legacy system yeah. game and i wanted to build something new no and that's one thing we stress with people that the end goal isn't just just to promote bitcoin we want to promote opportunities and growth and people and people are our whole beings and so you need to actually really care about the people themselves not just you know trying to get them to use bitcoin and move on we want to see them be the leaders of tomorrow and give them real tools in all those ways so that's exciting 
Um, I, I think you brought the the POS yeah, system yeah, with yeah. you. Can you show for for those that are uh, not watching uh, that, that they don't have video? I'll try to explain it, but it's this really simple POS system that what would you say they're like a hundred dollars a piece yes, for the machines? Yeah. Plus taxes in Brazil, they are one hundred and ten percent. Oh my goodness. Tax. Okay. Well, we got to yeah. figure out a, a better place to bring them in. But, yeah. but I love how it, for the merchants, they can create a normal QR code. So somebody doesn't have a card, they can just scan it and use their phone. But for yeah. people who have a card, yeah. they can tap it. And I think you were saying merchants could do the same thing if they just had a cell phone with an NFC yeah, reader. Yeah. 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 But the whole point, the, I think the main feature of the POS machine is the printer. It changes everything. Like you can give to the customer a receipt and also to the merchant, uh, you know, some precious information like the Bitcoin price, when the, the transaction took place, the code of the transaction, we have a backend. So my idea- but, Which I, I just have to interject here. Some people might not think that that's that important, but when Bitcoin was rolled out in El Salvador, that was the, first question that all the merchants asked was, well, how do I give somebody a receipt? And in the US, we're kind of starting to get a little bit away from receipts and everything's done more digitally. But in most of the world, receipts are key. Without a receipt, you have no proof that you actually paid for it. You have no way to get reimbursed if you're working for a company. And so it is very crucial that the vendors be able to give a receipt back. That's not my idea was a Vinicius idea. We need a receipt, man. I went to the merchant every day. I traveled all around Brazil and we need the receipt. And man, I have the machine, but we need to buy somehow in China. And it's really complicated. I talk like 100 manufacturers and I tried to convince them to, to push the idea of the Bitcoin POS and they said, no, it's blocking on China. We can't do that. And they also tried to charge me like a uh, couple hundreds of dollars to make some personalizations because I would not to get the apps from the Play Store because they inject codes on it. And as a Bitcoin project, the safety is, is important. So I downloaded all APKs, the, 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 uh, the builds of the, the, the software here and send to the, to the manufacturer and say, look, we have something huge here. I tried to sell them something really important. And the, the guy who helped me, Philo, of the company that uh, well, developed the device is the best device available now. Uh, three gigabytes of RAM, 16. It's, it's one of the best POS available for $100. There are other machines like Sumi or other Z92 or C300, but they cost double of that machine. And also the manufacturers don't want to collaborate with Bitcoiners, right? So I found a, a factory that can make like 50,000 uh, 50, 50, machines per month. So now we have a plan to hyper Bitcoinize the world. We can have that machine. Also, I check it if something is going out, if they changes the codes. So I try to make it, it's, it, you know, you don't need to like, be a technique guy, a technical guy like me, but it's very easy to set up. In the whole, in the entire point of the machine is like when you pay with a Visa card, the funds aren't in the machine, right? So the best POS available now is like a BTC pay server, and also it have uh, NFC capabilities. So it's impossible. Oh, to when I pay here, so I will, uh, what's the best? Here's the best. Yeah. Do you want to make it? So for those who don't have video, he's just uh, typing in uh, okay. the number of sats uh, purchased and, and then uh, showing how quickly it can be paid with the card. And it's 
the card, the this one, both cards. So it just looks kind of like a credit card, but it has uh, sats loaded in it. And I, and I love the music uh, when it when it comes through. So let me show the receipt. And then the receipt pops right out, and it's. Uh, I, I think that people underestimate how important those things are, like the receipts, even the fact that it has a card that for a lot of people in the developing world, a card represents like mo something more modern that they've made it because they associate credit cards with, with wealthy people or people that um, have a higher level of education. So now the fact that they, I, I got a receipt, all right. <laughs> now the fact that they have this card that has real money loaded on it real value the the hardest money in the world um it it makes them feel like they're included in the financial system and like you said they don't need a, a smartphone it's that's what been one of the challenges is to get people to transact in bitcoin they need a smartphone that you know usually is at least a hundred dollars for for a lot of people that could be you know, half or to a third of what they make in a month. But those cards are what, 50 cents, you said? 50 cents printed in the both sides with the custom UIDs. So now all kids are Satoshi Nakamoto <laughs> in the Jericho Aquarius School. And they like it. Who's Satoshi? Who knows? Can be you. <laughs> you know, they, they love that story. And also the card is like empower them. It's like they start to use the card. They know that it need money and you need to work to have money. So our educational program now is to make uh, then make handcrafts and we try to teach them how to negotiate, right? How many sats? I bring you uh, some in the Hope House. I bring you all that they did it's just five we, we have a lot of uh -huh. that handcraft and uh, there one for you it's a, a orange one right bitcoin on it and uh, the kid convinced me to pay ten thousand sats for it uh, because oh no there's bitcoin riding on it it's more expensive it was really <laughs> difficult to find the letters so uh it's a way like they 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 started their journey and they are much more advanced than a lot of you know investors and people think that bitcoin is a pyramid or ponzi scheme you know bitcoin is a it's a technology to save money and also to give you privacy you know it's important for you to understand for for the people for the ordinary people to understand that never Bitcoin supported any war. Like we are just running machines, get saving electricity into a lines of code, and it's the best way to send energy to everywhere. Like Michael Saylor uh, has important things about he says what he says is like what rich people need to to listen to because they. Like, if you die today and if you need to, to send funds for your family, it's really difficult. Man, write 12 words in a piece of paper, get one BTC there. You have nothing to lose if you have millions, right? And it's a very easy way to people like make it happen, make a, like... Um, for succession plans and yeah and also you you have technology like multi signature wallets who depends of several signatures so you can give one to your wife for your father for your for entire family and only if they agree they will be able to find to 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 make the transaction so bitcoin is is like a technology and we never had such kind of money you know like in brazil there's a important thing to say uh the banks if you leave some money in your account for four years or five years they close your account and your money disappear so like for five months ago last year they launched 
a tool from the central bank for you to look if you have some lost and uh, lost money. And then the website went down and uh, they, they selected one day, depending on your birth date, for you to check if you have <laughs> some money there. And man, I forgot that day. I am sure that I have money in bank accounts that I don't remember. And now you can't get the money anymore. You know, so if I if I did it with a real Bitcoin wallet, my money will yeah. be there. Well, I mean, like like we like to say, Bitcoin is for everyone from from the wealthiest to to the poorest. It provides you know tools that are better than anything in the existing system. And what I like so much about these cards and, and I'll admit I was kind of a skeptic at first of like, do we really need these cards? Are we just trying to replicate the existing system? You know, that to me, it seems like one extra thing. Why, why even go that route? But the more kind of I thought about it and then hearing your explanations on things, I'm realizing how crucial these cards are going to be to having truly circular economies. Because like you said, I don't want to promote for all these kids to be carrying, you know, smartphones with them all the time. Yeah. And that's I've wrestled with that as we've been promoting these projects and people have really needed phones in order to spend and participate. And so when you're giving them a phone, then you're bringing all this other time wasting things in with it. But with these cards, now the kids can go off to school. A lot of the schools here don't permit the kids to bring phones in. So we could never bring Bitcoin in. Now with these cards, you can yeah. actually do that. It just opens up so many things and so cheaply. And in novel that you can uh, rings. Uh, well, I saw that ring. Like yeah. so, you think is you don't even have to remember to bring a card with you. You yeah. just have your ring on and you just tap on the yeah, the machine bracelet. Bracelet. Yeah. So it's it's really powerful, and uh, it's like for thirty countries, thirty world countries are really important to and also in the version two of the card that i will work for bitcoin because i donated to them like 70 cards and one pos machine for the african kids of the surfer kids uh -huh. they have this program of 60 kids going to surf or study they you know so they will have it and will be awesome to see african kids using cards and in the version two we have two QR codes in the card. One is for receive payments, right? And the other is to check balance. So in with the POS machine, you can scan this QR code and check the balance. And the LNBits API is really powerful. Thanks, Ben Mark, the Ben Arc, and all LNBits developer, developers, you guys did it possible because without any bits and the bolt cards extension would have been possible to do that. So LN bits is an, an, an example for all Bitcoin companies, uh, developing wallets, uh, how an IPE an IPI can be used to empower people. Like now the kids can check when I back to Jacob Aquara, I already built the check balance script. So, uh, Kids will be able to, with a 30 part smartphone, check their balances like with no friction. Just scan the QR code, you see your balance in SATs, in BTC, and in Fiat. It's really powerful and is necessary for a, like a family here in Amazonte. They have only one smartphone to them. So imagine it that you can like have five rings for like $1 each and you give the rings or, or the bracelets or the cards to the kids and the entire family can have different spend limits. They will choose how is the maximum amount of they can transact in a single transaction or daily. It's like empower people. Yeah. And it's the financial system is doing it, but only for the certain level and 50% of the entire world don't have even documents, you know? So Bitcoin is like the ultimate technology to include 
those people on the financial world. And it's so powerful because you can buy mobile credits, you can buy Netflix, you can buy Spotify, you can buy food on uh, Carrefour, you can uh, buy a flight, you can, without a credit card, you can buy book a flight online. Yeah, no, it's, it's, I'm super excited about that. So I need to ask you something <laughs> live, man. Please buy for Elzonte 100 POS machines and give to all street vendors and all people of that city. We don't have cards yet. Galo is working for it. I, I tried to push that idea here on the conference. So I talked with several developers, the CTO, the, all developers of Galois are convinced to include the car. No, I just need your promise that you're going to buy 100, not less. Eh? Please, and give to all, to guys of the streets, to, to every vendor of that city. Also, the POS machine don't have only the payment aspect, like I like to uh, hear or in your in our POS, we have Duolingo to cheat in other language. And also we can create content to then to learn other stuff, not only Bitcoin, but how to lower the term preference, how to, you know, uh, you, we, we can include it and use it as a tool to people like learn something new. Well, since you put me on the spot here, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it back at, at Galois and say if they if they develop and are willing to support that, we will buy a hundred machines and and we will also provide some of those machines for Bitcoin Lake in Guatemala and Bitcoin Akasi um, in South Africa and try to work with uh, the the other projects too because I do think that this is going to be super super important and i think when people realize how easy it is it works and i think it is important to do it in a in a um, dense population like a small community like el Zante, and have all the stores using it so it becomes normal for everything then even tourists that come in they could buy cards themselves and and not have to worry about carrying their their phone around with them so i see huge potential so we need to work on Galloy. I know Andrew over there who who was actually uh, always promoting what you guys were doing to me. I always talk to Andrew of, hey, what other projects out there do you think are promising? And he's kind of always, you know, mentioning you guys yeah. and what you're doing. So so you work on them, you get them to support that and, and we'll put the order in for the machines and get those going. Great, great, perfect. Perfect. I am sure that Galois is already working on it and they are in the secret spot here in El Salvador with 10 developers. With I give them one POS machine and I set up the Nicholas ring, <laughs> the CEO of Galois, and, uh, to make sure that he can tap. And this morning he tweeted a receipt of the machine and I have the, you know, the transaction of a two sets donation that they are trying and uh, Lee Saltman of Bitcoin Django already did uh, the, the NFC implementation. So I think in one or two months we'll be ready to everyone here. And uh, the next time I'll be able to use my card to not use my phone or my ring or my bracelet to go everywhere. And well, you're probably gonna have to come back up when we roll this out. To, yeah, uh, no, man. But the machine is really simple to set up. And also when you buy it, I will ask to the supplier, uh, make all everything needed to the machine reach ready, ready to go. Turn it on, convert, set up the Wi-Fi, and it's ready. All apps needed will be there. They are really, really good suppliers and the guys are, the Chinese guys are pretty excited with that, you know, possibility to make that we rebrand their company. Like now they, they will be selling like that machine is like a crazy because every Bitcoin should have it yeah. and should go to a, a small bakery or a supermarket and say, look, I have a suggestion for everyone. 
what it's what uh, sometimes can be needed to start a Bitcoin economy. It's like you go there and say, look, you don't know how to use Bitcoin. I give here like $100 in advance. And can you give me a 10% discount? So give me $110 as credit, right? Then I will leave the machine here. If you lose it, you need to pay it. But uh, we have this piece of paper here. If you lose, you, you, you make it and then you need to pay for it. And then I, I will keep the Bitcoin of until we reach 110. Then when we reach, I give you 100 more. So print all receipts when you make a Bitcoin sale. And then I have 24 merchants calling for it. You know, it's incredible. The people, you know, reducing the risk. And as I am trying to make a Bitcoin economy thrive, yeah. there, there are some important places for the community that, and now we are paying cash back in Bitcoin and they like, they, they are uh, some merchants calling for it and, oh, I can give you 30%. I can give you 20. And uh, what I do when I make a deal with 20%, I give 5% for the employees, 5% to the kids, 5% to the social project, and 5% I deal with the volatility. So, like in the in the future, like big companies can like uh, lend money and give to the to the merchants and uh, with a better hate. You know, and we are going to exploit the fiat system, receiving Bitcoin payments and also pushing the, the circular economy. So the machine is so powerful. It's, I am surprised that anyone did it before. I, I don't did anything. I just bought a ready machine from a Chinese supplier and I put all available wallets like Breeze, Voltage Pay. Allen Beats, BTCP server, Blue Wallet, Bitcoin Beach. So we have everything here. So you can choose it. And here's the supermarket that I did this that I told you. I give them 1000 reais okay. and, and they give me 100. And then I, I, the kids can buy anything they want. So it, it seems to me like the only real risk with this is well, a couple things. One, they have to trust that the merchant's putting the correct amount in. So they have to make sure and pay attention because if they put more in, they could pull more off their card. But I understand you can limit, put limits on the card so that it doesn't do more than a certain amount in one transaction. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And also they need to print every receipt. Okay. And we check. Check on the receipt uh, afterwards. And also we have on the BTCP server, everything so it's a small amount of money yeah man. yeah yeah no it's there's like, always risks with those things you can have the same thing with a credit card machine they can yeah. put the wrong amount on yeah. um but but yeah that's just something for people to to be aware of and then what if they lose their card is there a way for them to recover the funds or yes yes okay. there's a qr code to block the card to disable it okay and there's that they have full access to the wallet so so if somebody loses their card on that day, the people could maybe use up to the limit. So yeah. they could take up to the limit, but as soon as you block it, they wouldn't yes, be but able to. They, they are fun. Like the node of the school has like $500 of limit. Yeah. So, man. Yeah, I'm just thinking more bigger, you know, as the scales and gets yeah, bigger yeah, and bigger, yeah. these, these will be some of the issues. But no, I, I think this thing has huge potential um, in so many ways, especially for promoting Bitcoin circular economies, which is obviously what we're about here and what we're focused on. So that's why I'm so excited uh, about that. And I'm, yeah, I can't wait till we can roll that out yes. in El Zante. And here are the products that we developed that uh, Vinicius, the guy of, uh, he's trying to push your corporate side I don't like it. I don't like to sell anything. 
He's tra- There's nothing wrong with selling things. It's good for there to be uh, businesses yeah, yeah. that support these things. We need strong Bitcoin businesses. So so please tell us about what, what you guys are trying to do as a business. Yes, they we are trying to make the paper wallets, the pig banks, the stickers, the mouse pads, the boat cards, the the protectors of the boat cards, the machines, the nodes, and support and sell to risk packs. Uh, so the idea of the corporate layer is to integrate it. So we pay to the kids build the paper wallets and, and put stickers in the in the big banks. We 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 put we, we buy the machines and we set up it for the merchant. So if someone's outside of our circular economy wanted to buy it, you can contact Vinicius and he will help them to you know, buy it. We accept only Bitcoin. No fear. <laughs> Never. Don't ask for it. We will no accept any deposit of fiat. If you want to support us somehow with fiat, we have the community council in the city to support the, the, the project. So you can donate to them. And then we have this agreement to like apply it to the community. But our products, we are trying to make a Bitcoin, a true Bitcoin only company. So like Breeze, they, they don't, they donate to us 10 machines, but they buy it, they buy it, yeah, they bought it in the supplier and then they pay it for it, right? So we can do it. We, we are open. We need to get funded. We need help. We need support of companies. So, we are open to like find the best place, but we don't have a bank account. We have only Bitcoin. So the best way to donate to our projects is go to donate.priabitcoin.org or go to our Twitter, uh, Bitcoin Beach BR, and that's it. We are there here to help other communities to help, you know, to we are following the Bitcoin Beach white paper. And I would do love to go everywhere in the planet and push that ideas and bring a Bitcoin box and help the kids buy fruits, you know, install it. It's so inspiring. And it's how we are going to make 1000 Bitcoin bits like very fast. So it's been uh, for me, it's been such a pleasure to have you here this week and get to know you you personally and see your passion and your commitment to this. And I can tell people, you know, 100% give to this project, go to their uh, Twitter handle, donate. Uh, I've, I've gone there, we've donated. It's it's very simple. They do everything like that much better than we do at, at Bitcoin Beach. So hopefully they can uh, oh, help us on our end. We are um, in this together. No, it's, uh, it's been a real pleasure uh, having you here and, for me, that one night when we were sitting down with all the different projects after the, the conference and we were all having dinner together and just seeing the interaction going back and forth between everybody and the ideas being passed back and forth and uh, just the open handedness that everybody has with everything. It was really like, man, this is really happening. We're going to see these Bitcoin circular economies springing up all over. And I really see you guys as the the leaders that are going to lead, you're going to have all these projects coming to you saying, hey, we want to replicate what you guys are doing. And so that's how Bitcoin adoption expands. That's how financial freedom expands. And that's how we make the economic system more fair so that people can pursue their dreams so they can pursue what they want to pursue and not be on the fiat hamster wheel. So thank you for all the work that you're doing, Fernando. I know how hard it is. I know how at times it can feel like you want to give up, but I would just encourage you to keep doing what you're doing. You guys are an inspiration to, to us, to I know to a lot of other projects out there. And we are going to make sure we have these in El Zante. I'll be hounding the guys at, at Galloway to, um, to, to do the implementation on their end. And yeah, we'll make this happen. Uh, now I have a great end for my book. You know, it will be awesome to back here and see that those machines took in place and the kids also maybe buying fruits with their cards. It's like a, a possible idea. 
make a partnership, you know, it's it's so good. And also I think the universe will give us like much more inspiration and strength, you know, and bigger donors watching this. Please, man, start your own economy. Start by doing this. Leave the fiat system. Get rid of the wars and go to the peaceful money because it's the solution. You know, well, people together making something better. That's what Bitcoin is. It, is that what a circular economy is? So we are on this together. We are not competing like in all industries, uh, people are competing. So we are not competing on that. We are all like collaborating. And I am so glad to be part of that movement, to, to, to lead a small piece of it. And if any community builder need help, can count on me. I am fully dedicated to make the circular commerce drive. Uh, it's you know I am working uh, working in, on that book that will be like an start and how I did and how you can do so soon I will publish it and I hope to you know inspire more people to follow my my and your steps. Well, I uh, am hoping that sometime in the next year I can get down and see the project in person. Uh, for other Bitcoiners that are out traveling and, and wanting to visit, is that something? Can they can they stop by and and spend some time with you guys? Yes, for sure, for sure. We what well, Vinicius Palavra de Satoshi is the guy who's take care of that. Uh, but you can reach me on Twitter, and it's where I am. And you can talk with us or go to the community console. We are working every day there. So go there and find us and stack sats and spend sats. That's the key, spend sats. We, yes. we need to not just stack, but spend. That's the only thing that makes these circular economies work. Yes, so. and but first you need to stack because yeah. you wait the price back. You always can stack and, you know, like I am on that not because the price can spike every time but it's the peaceful money yeah leave the field like i have a theory just to end to finish i pay you one dollar you pay then one dollar and you know that one dollar after 10 transactions will be ten dollars but it's just one bill right it's just one bill if you like get that dollar off the system and you you are not paying taxes you are not supporting what they are doing behind the scenes sitting at table and say look look let's make a war let's send 100 million dollars to the you know to the war it's, we need to remove that our money our labor from the that you know because if we remove the money from state it's how you're going to remove the money of the state by creating a circular economy. So go there, get $100, man, create your wallet, make Bitcoin payments for your, you know, for the people that you are working with, for to try to buy some, some from the streets, you know, because it's the money that you remove from the economy to not support what they are doing. It's a silent protest. So there are several reasons to use Bitcoin, but the main reason is that it's the peaceful money, is the way that we are protesting against the system. And it's a very nice protest because sometimes, you know, the Bitcoin can go, you know, to the moon. And if you stack sets, you'll be better. <laughs> All right. I'll, uh, we'll leave it with that. And uh, we'll keep following what you guys are doing there and following you on Twitter. So thanks for spending uh, this last week with us and Thank letting us uh, pick your brain on all these things here tonight. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, everyone, for watching. And that's it.